Okay look, let's be honest, if you clicked on this video, you know why you're here. It's the same reason I'm here. You saw one of these things, probably online or with some other maker, and you decided, wow, I really want one of those. But when you went to check online to see how much they cost, you decided that precision wasn't quite worth that price tag. So instead of spending a reasonable amount of money on a high quality precision tool, let's instead use our thousands of dollars worth of tools to make a way shit Okay, so for those of you who actually don't know what an optical center bench is, let me, let me quickly go over kind of what it is and uh, why we care about them. So effectively all an optical center punch is, you know, in comparison to your regular run-of-the-mill center punch, um, is an added bit of stuff uh, that makes it easier to line up the punch with the place you're actually trying to hit. So with a regular punch, you know, it's pretty easy to get relatively close to the, uh, the mark that you're actually trying to punch uh, for, your, for your drill. But it's always, I don't know, at least with me, um, I don't know, it doesn't matter how hard I try or, or how much lining up I do, it, it somehow manages to be just slightly off. I don't know, I, I can't seem to do anything about it, and, and that's why I want one of these things. So, how it works is you have a body, basically just something that can hold the center punch in a particular location, and some kind of lens with a, with a column on it. And what that does is it lets you put the lens into the body, and have a little crosshair on the bottom of the lens. Line that crosshair up with the hole you're trying to punch. Hold the body stationary, take the lens out, put in the punch, and give it a whack. And theoretically, the punch mark should perfectly line up with what you're trying to hit. Now, I think this should actually be pretty easy to build. So I'm gonna make the body out of this big old chunk of aluminum that I have. Uh, make the punch out of this hardened steel linear rod and then try to make a lens and, you know, this little crosshair, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call this part, uh, out of these acrylic rods. Uh, they're usually used for cakes, but I think if we can get it polished up nice, it'll work. Uh, again, this is all kind of preliminary stages in theory, so let's hop over to the CAD and get this thing drawn up uh, to dimensions, and then we'll go from there. So, to get things started, I modeled up the base of the punch, which will be cut from a section of the rod of aluminum that I showed earlier. I made the inner diameter of the base the same as the diameter of the steel linear rod that I'm going to use to make the actual punch out of, and that'll let us rely on the linear rod's manufacturing tolerances to keep the point of the punch concentric with the base. Next, I cut down the top section of the base to create a more comfortable handhold, and also a nice spot to rest my fingers when I'm using the punch. Following this, I modeled up the acrylic rod to get a feel for how long it should be. This is a pretty simple design, so the main reason for making the CAD model in the first place is just to make it a little bit easier to make up some of the arbitrary dimensions, and I settled on having the acrylic rod stick about a quarter of its length up from the top of the base. Once I got the rough shape modeled, I played around with it a bit more and ended up with this, which I think should be a decent guide for what this thing is going to wind up looking like. Okay, time to make this thing in the real world. I started off using the bandsaw to cut a section off the aluminum rod to approximately the right length, leaving around a centimeter of extra material to hold onto. I then brought the material over to the lathe and was reminded of why I rarely use this piece of aluminum stock. This is slightly too large for the internal jaws of the lathe to hold onto, and so I had to remove them and replace them with the extended jaws. But, unfortunately, the material is not quite large enough to hold with the outer section of the jaws, and I didn't leave quite enough material for the section being machined to stick out past the outer section, so we'll need to address that. To be fair to the mini lathe, this is the only time I wish I had a larger chuck, and realistically, it's a pretty minor inconvenience that is well worth the ability to have a lathe that fits on a desktop. I cleaned up the face of the material just to get rid of the bandsaw marks and start getting everything looking nice and clean. Then, to address the work holding issues, I figured it'd be easiest to cut down the outer diameter of a section of the stock to a point where it can fit in the regular lathe chuck. I took it down to the right diameter using a few cutting passes and then took the material out and reinstalled it in the original chuck jaws. One nice thing about using this method is I was able to leave a shoulder that I could then use to index the part to when it was being held. I always find it to be quite difficult to mount material in the chuck straight when there's only a small section to hold onto, and this made it a lot easier to keep things more or less in line. After the material was clamped back in place, I faced off the soon-to-be bottom of the base and cleaned up the outer radius. 
Grabbing dimensions off the CAD model we made, I used a sharpie and a pair of calipers to lay out the base plate dimensions I was trying to hit. I then started working to cut the thinner handhold feature into place. While I was doing this, I realized I should probably be supporting the material from the other side to prevent any chatter or deflection. So I mounted a center drill in the lathe tailstock and bored a small hole in the center of the part. I then replaced the center drill with a live center and pressed it into the part to provide support while cutting. After that, it was just a matter of working my way through the material with a few different cutters until I had it cut down to the final size. Now that the base is cut down to the right outer diameter, we can start to work on boring out the center hole to accommodate the punch and lens assembly. I started this off by putting a 17 64 inch drill into the tailstock and working my way through the material until I had a hole that passed the entire way through. The final hole needs to be 8mm, so the main goal of this was just to make room for the next tool. Okay, so here's where things start to get a little bit experimental. Uh, I want to make sure that the hole that goes through the body of the center punch um, is as concentric um, and, and consistent the, the whole way through. I, I don't want there to be any uh, taper in, in one direction or the other. So I need a boring bar to do that, and I don't actually have one. Uh, so I looked around online and I saw that you can cut the tip off of just a standard twist drill and then use that to, uh, to actually bore holes uh, in your material on the lathe. Uh, I don't know how well it'll work. I don't know if I'm simplifying things or if there's another step that I don't know of, but I think the only way to figure that out is to go try it. So I'm gonna go cut the tip off of this and yeah, we'll see if it works. And there we go. Honestly, that little angle grinder jig, probably one of the top five most useful things that I've ever built. Uh, anyway, let's get this mounted on the lathe and see if it works. Okay, so that is too flexible. I think the solution here is use a bigger drill. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so that didn't work either. Um, I don't know, there must be something that I'm missing or that I'm forgetting about what was posted in that form, um, but it did give me an idea. I bet you that an end mill, just a regular flat nose end mill, will work quite well. So let's, uh, let's give that a shot, and if this doesn't work, I don't know, I might just have to go with uh, plan B, or D, I guess in this case, and just uh, drill it out just with a regular uh, drill. This ended up working extremely well. Even with my non-ideal mounting, it bored out the material like butter. No chatter at all, and it left a really nice surface finish. Using this method, I bored away the material, and once I got close to the final dimension, I advanced the tool post a half thou at a time until the rod that will eventually be turned into the center punch could just barely pass smoothly through the entire length. So this part is now pretty well done, except for this little bit of cleanup we need to do. Um, so now it's time for us to move on to the hard part, which is making this into a passable lens. Uh, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but I think our best bet is just going to be cut this down, get it in the lathe, and see if we can polish this up. Uh, and, well, basically go from there. I faced off the acrylic to get a relatively smooth surface, and then alternated between 1000 grit sandpaper and polishing compound until I was able to get a pretty decent result. It's a bit difficult to show on camera, but you can clearly see the underlying lines when looking through the acrylic with minimal distortion. The next step is to cut the body of the acrylic to match the ID of the base. Whoa, hey buddy, what are you doing? That is a lot of hangout for something as flexible and fragile as acrylic. You gotta be careful, you spent all that time polishing it up into a lens, you don't want to- Yeah, okay, I deserve that one. In my defense, it was very late at night when I was working on this. Anyway, back at this with a better setup this time, that makes use of a live center. It was much easier to get the material cut roughly down to size, and once I was close to the final dimensions, same as before, I advanced the tool post a half thou at a time until the acrylic slid freely into the base. Then, I faced off the end and got to work polishing the material until I could clearly see through it like before. I'm actually pretty surprised with how easy this stuff gets polished to this level of clarity. Uh, I know I cut through the process in the video, but in reality, it only took around 5-10 to 10 minutes from start to finish to get it extremely clear and easy to see through. So, last thing is to create the center punch portion of the optical center punch. And this was done simply by turning the cross slide 45 degrees, mounting the rod in the lathe, and turning the material to a point. I came in with a file at the end to clean up the edge and give it a small chamfer, and now we're good to test this thing out. 
All right, and here are all our parts done. So we have the base, the lens, and the hardened punch. And so theoretically, this should be good to go. Uh, I went ahead and I printed off this little test piece here, or at least I printed off the, the template with the, some hole markings and just a little piece of scrap aluminum. So we can go ahead and test this thing out. Um, I think it's gonna be kind of tough to actually show everything all at once from one camera angle. So what I'll probably do is do a run through now uh, and then go back and get some b-roll and I'll interlace that in uh, just to make it a bit easier to show what this thing looks like in, in real life uh, rather than trying to line everything up in camera. Okay, so to avoid destroying my desk here, I'm gonna bring this notepad in. We'll just work on the back of this. We've got our piece with our center locations marked and we'll get the base and the lens. And we're going to look through the lens and line up the dot with the center of one of these hole locations. All right, that looks pretty lined up to me. So now we will hold the base in place and bring our lens acrylic rod out and replace it with our custom made center punch. All right, moment of truth. I ended up not being completely happy with the result. It was slightly off center. And I think this was likely error introduced in the making of the center punch element uh, due to the use of the three jaw chalk. This should be a pretty easy fix. So I remounted it using some paper as shims to get it as close to lined up as possible. Uh, you can see here, there is still a little bit of eccentricity, uh, but this is pretty much as close as I can get with my current setup. I recut the point and gave it another test, and this time the results are much more in line with what I wanted. Okay, so admittedly the results aren't perfect, but I think this is a lot better than what I could have done by hand, and more importantly, it's much more consistent than trying to use a hand punch. I'd love to hear what suggestions you folks have about how I can improve this. I've been thinking for a while about getting a four jaw independent chuck, and maybe this will be the catalyst to finally get me to press that order button. Uh, if there's enough suggestions and interest, I'll make a part two where I put all those suggestions together and chase that last little bit of precision. Anyway, I think that about wraps this video up. As always, thank you folks for watching, and I'll see you next time.